gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It's time for the final countdown. The show starts in. Hi guys. <laughs> what did you think? Did you like our intro? <laughs> well, you were supposed to go. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hi, peeps. Hi, everybody. Oh, dogs are having meltdowns right now. Yep. Uh, so welcome to yes. a, another edition of WAW. The show where important topics of the day are Largely ignored. And foolishness reigns supreme. And it does. Yes. And we're back to uh, <laughs> ask the eternal question. What's, What's happening? happening? And, and that is just corny <laughs> every time. But, but we have to do it because that's what we do. We're corny. Yeah. And my son makes fun of me every time I do it. Does he? It's part of the reason I do it. We should probably do it <laughs> more often then. Uh, it's, it's all about embarrassing your yes. children. And that's uh, uh, when your children become of the adult age, yep. I think your main goal as a parent is just like massive payback, which means embarrassing them at every yeah. corner you can, that's every right. turn you can. So and I do. She does a good job. No, that. I do. I do. And I enjoy every minute of it. So, and, uh, and, and, and deep inside, I feel like they love it. You think so? No, I don't feel like they do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, welcome to Woot's world. Uh, we're um, very uh, Woot's excited. Woot's not Woot's world. <laughs> that's, what, that's what our children call it, Woot's world. Yeah. So, so okay, so here's something we have to ask. My son thinks we should do a, gar is it Garth? Uh, um, Wayne's world. Wayne's world. But he thinks that we should dress up as, you know, Wayne and Wayne Garth. And Garth. Hey, Todd. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Hi, Kimberlyn. Hi, you guys. So we have a hey, very, Bob. very, very special show tonight. We have a very, yes. very special friend tonight. Friend and amazingly talented. I said amazing again. Uh, a talented person. Yes. I had I had someone write in and say, you say amazing a lot. Sorry. It's a good word. She's always uh, talking about me when she says it, so I'm fine with it. Yeah. I'm absolutely fine with it. So, so our um, our friend Julie Dolan, mm -hmm. who is an actress, a musician, voiceover a artist, voice. I mean, <clears throat> she does it all. Supremely what do you call talented. her? What do you call she's her? She's a triple threat. She's a triple threat. <laughs> Actually, a quadruple threat because she's also a dancer. Oh. That's one thing we didn't yeah. touch on, but we'll talk about it tonight. Watch maybe out, she, people. Maybe Julie will even bust a move for us. And, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, so let's see. First of all, yeah. we want to talk about our sponsor. Yeah, let's do our sponsor. Uh, so uh, our sponsor is uh, Calvin. Calvin from what? Calvin's Auto Repair. Calvin's Auto Repair. You want to show them the picture? Yeah. There? So there's a very special thing about Calvin, though. There's a shop. Yep. That's his logo. Yep. And if you uh, mention WAW, he will give you 10% off of your bill. 10% off of your brand new engine. Like I said, you, you may not want to. <laughs> well, I, I guess you could mention it more than once. Uh, but if you, you know, if you're replacing your engine or your catalytic converter or, yeah, or yeah. your transmission, that could be pretty substantial savings. Yeah, right? absolutely. So again, Calvin's auto repair. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm sorry, guys. I have my banner here, but his address is 501 East Glen Oaks Boulevard in Glendale, California. This guy will take care of you and he won't fix what does not need to be fixed. He will fix what needs to be fixed That's right. and let you know what needs to be fixed in the future. So again, Calvin. He's the absolute best. 10% off if you mention W-A-W. Yes. That's a deal, right? So if you have a car, truck, go see Cal. It makes me do this every time. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to save a buck, go see Cal. 
Take the car in for your wife. She will love you all your life. Go see Cal, go see Cal, go see Calvin Ellis at Calvin Ellis Auto Repair in Glendale, California. Yeah. You won't be uh, disappointed. No, you won't. No, you won't. He's, 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 he's amazing. I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> as long as she's talking about again. me, I'm fine with that. Okay. So, um, Hey, we got a big weekend ahead. Yeah. It's starting tomorrow. I'm uh, driving up to Paso Robles, California. Uh, we're going to be playing with Led Zepp again at the Barrel House Brewing Company uh, in Paso Robles. So anybody that's up there, I think there was about 30 tickets left. So you may want to go online and, and uh, pick those up if you're planning on attending. Yeah. The, then when we come back the very next day, uh, I'm going to be playing with the long run, TLR, at uh, – Patty's Station yeah. on Friday evening. Uh, that's going to be um, an all acoustic performance. And uh, I believe we're going to be starting hmm, about eight, eight or nine o'clock that night. Uh, but it's going to be a great night. All acoustic. Um, Patty Station, a brand new venue for us. And it's in San Juan Capistrano. So here it's a cable car. So it, the the actual is that what it is? Well, that that's what uh, Mary Palmer and okay. Shannon said. It's a it's a cable car. I, I haven't so I haven't ever seen the place. Yeah, I don't know. So I don't it's know. It's gonna be brand new. But the very next night, yeah, got another great show, and uh, it's actually gonna be Brenda's birthday. My birthday. So um, thirty nine. The long run is gonna be playing at the Canyon <laughs> in Agora Hills. I love the way you just totally ignored that statement. <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually debuting a couple of new tunes that night. Um, you're going to be very surprised and very pleased. One of my faves, you guys. Right? Oh, it's the best. It's, it's going to be best. so much yeah. fun. Uh, so that's going to be on Saturday night. So we got. So come celebrate my birthday with me right. at the Agora Canyon. Blondie's birthday yes, bash at Blondie, the Canyon yes, in Agora yes, Hills. Yes. And. You can go on our, our page. Uh, we're going to be posting a $10 coupon for the uh, TLR VIP guest list. Oh, really? Ten, ten bucks to get There's in. There's a VIP list? Yeah. The, the, uh, what does it take Canyon to get on allowed that? us to do that. $10 to get in. $10. Now, if you want to have dinner there, you're going to have to make reservations. Make reservations, To uh, save a table yep. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. It's going to be a great night, probably going to be playing about two hours. Yeah. And we start about 8, eight o'clock, I believe it is. Paul's wanting to know when, yeah. when Led's up again. <laughs> so tomorrow, oh, yeah. night. Tomorrow, uh, night. tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Paul, we're going to be playing with Led Zepp again at the Barrel House Brewing Company in Paso Robles, California. Yeah. All right. So uh, before we bring on our, our beautifully wonderful, and I'm going to say it again. Amazing. For you all, you haters. Amazing guests. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to do a little video that Ernie Baru from Van Halen made for us. Okay. We go to Puerto Vallarta every other year with about 12 of our friends. And this happens to be a video that Ernie made. And we just got it literally the other day from Ernie um, of our uh, uh, shenanigans in Puerto Vallarta, in Puerto Vallarta. So, he, so here's, a little, um, here's a little clip from... Uh, from our Puerto Vallarta trip. And don't hold anything against us peoples, but here it is. <laughs>
So that was that was just a tad of, of our seven days in Portland. <laughs> Needless to say, none of us probably even remember that video at all, including Ernie. Remember, you mean what happened in the video? Just the video itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't even know he made the video yeah. until he sent it over yeah. to us. Yeah, but it was fun. So ago. we do Puerto Vallarta every other year. Yeah. And we take, what, what do we took? Like 13 people was with us the last 11. Time. Jim 11. and I have a timeshare, and it's amazing. Okay, so. We are getting ready to bring on our very special guest, Julie Dolan, ultra talented woman here. Yes. I mean, I was doing a little research on her. Yeah. My gosh. Is there anything you are not talented at? She no. can do anything. Anything. Absolutely anything. anything. Singing, dancing, music. Incredible piano She's player. She's beautiful. Keyboard player. She's, yeah. It's yeah. like, okay. It ought to be a sin to be that talented, honestly. <laughs> anyway, we love her so much. She's the sweetest girl ever. And we are going to play a little intro for you. Just kind of a little uh, yeah. just a little teaser on, yeah. on what Let's she does. Let's just see what she's done over yeah, the years. Yeah, so, yeah. So hang in, guys. And this is our, this is our girl, Julie. mistake was to interfere. Next time you butt out, if your dad and your best friend are having an argument, it's their argument, not yours. Just what I've always wanted. Oh, oh, oh no, I've a, no, uh, in mine, in mine. Could, could I, I got, uh, <laughs> could I, could I help you with something? Oh no, I don't want to break up the party. Oh, well there's always room for a foursome. Cindy Landon, Black Widow. I'll fuck you if you let me go. If you don't shut up, I will kill you myself. I didn't see your guy get shot or where he went. So I really don't know anything. Well, you better know something because that story is not good enough to buy you any favors. Now, I want you to write down everything you can think of. What kind of cars and trucks he might drive, where he might go, and who he might call. There's Tammy, a Holiday Inn Express prostitute who rakes in $38.99 a night. This experience this whole past week, it's the most rewarding experience ever. We leave as friends, we leave as family. Yeah, this is Tiger Woods. Oh, hello, Mr. Woods. How can I help you? Oh, I forgot my keys. I really need to get something out of the car. I can unlock your Buick from here. Oh, perfect, thanks. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling OnStar. I am Princess Leia of Alderaan. We've placed a rebel spy vital to the survival of the rebellion into your star speeder. You must see him safely delivered to the coordinates I'm transmitting to your R2 unit. This is our most desperate hour. Help me start to us. You're my only hope. This is Princess Leia Organa. I look forward to a lieutenant and transmission. Well, there's no turning back now. Julie Dolan on the keyboards. Oh, Julie. my God. <laughs> that is quite a video, I have to tell you. Well, I, as I, I told you, it was like 10 minutes long, and I'm like, no, 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 I should probably cut it. I would have taken 12, because it was oh, great. It was oh, great. thank you. In any event, we've got about five minutes, guys. So let, No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nice to see you. Have a good day. <laughs> Oh man! It's welcome, yeah. welcome, thank you, thank you for having me. That's yes, um, you know, and we have, yeah. Uh -huh. 
I, I was going to say, I won't be busting a move tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I hung my tap shoes up a long time ago. <laughs> okay. All right. We, we just thought it might be, you know. Yeah. He, was, little, he was trying. A nice little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's, let's find out a little bit about your background, uh, Julia. So where, where were you born? Um, on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Wow. Is that from that video that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. No, I was born at Kaiser on Sunset Boulevard. Are you kidding? I thought you were joking. Okay. No. <laughs> oh. Wow. So you literally did you did you grow up uh, in, in the, Hollywood? In the valley. Mm -hmm. I'm a valley girl. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you lived there all your life. All my life, yep. Um, oh, I, life. And I'm still there. I still live here. Yeah, when, uh, when, yeah, when, did right. the, when did the entertainment kind of situation happen for you? When did you first? I mean, I kind of know. I know I, I've seen your first commercial, but when did it really kind of kick in for you internally? When you when you knew you wanted to be an entertainer? Um, well, you have you actually haven't seen my first commercial. My first commercial, I was nine. Um, so. I, when I was about three years old, I was watching television and I saw Shirley Temple uh, doing her singing and dancing. And I pointed to the TV and I said to my mom, I, that's what I wanna do. So right away she put me in uh, dancing school. So I took tap, jazz, ballet, toe, gymnastics, acrobatics, um, starting at three. And I was on stage at four, you know, in my little tutu doing tap dancing and ballet. And then when I was nine, the dance school opened up an acting school. So I started taking acting classes. I got an agent right away and started going on auditions. But I, it took me a long time to get like my SAG card, you know, Screen Actors Guild card. I think I was 19 um, doing a commercial. So wow. it took a long time and I almost quit a couple of times because as a kid, it's hard to take rejection. As an adult, it's hard to take rejection. <laughs> so yeah. can I can I can I uh, can I uh, surprise you with a little? Uh, this is what I what what I think may be your first commercial. Oh, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. A lot of cars are like pizzas. To get a lot on them, you gotta pay a lot extra. But not the 1979 Chevy Chevette. It comes with a lot already on it. Chevette ignores the pizza principle. With it, you get an AM radio, reclining bucket seats, console, white striped tires, and more, all at no extra cost. So avoid the pizza principle. Hi, Richie. Get a car with a lot already on it. Get the best-selling small car in America, Chevy Chevette. It's a lot of car for the money. Hi, Richie. Hi, kid. <laughs> yes, uh, that was my first commercial where I got my SAG card. Oh my yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, now, <laughs> do you know who Richie is? No. no. Do you remember the movie Grease with John yeah. Travolta? That's yeah. Barry Pearl. Barry Pearl played hey, Duty. Barry Pearl? Of, wow. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch it again now because. He, uh, he's he a did, young man. There. He comes he's to our man, uh, yeah. long run yeah. show. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's he's a good friend of mine still, and and uh, uh, gig, gig, uh, gigs uh, friends with him as well too. Yeah. So it's it's one big happy family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, I uh, had no idea. So yeah. Kelly, hi Kelly. Love you, Dylan. Can you see these comments? Yes. Yes, okay. I can. It's awesome. Good, good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Rick has joined us. Manny has joined us. Sylvie. Oh yay! M Manny's on his lunch break. So thank you, <laughs> Manny. <laughs> Manny. <laughs> so, so uh, Julie, when did you start playing the piano? Um, well, I went to Catholic school for twelve years, and next door was the convent. And um, one of the teachers there, I think my mom, you know, as a stage mom, she wanted to put me in every single lesson possible. So I took guitar lessons and singing lessons in German. I don't know why I was singing in German, but <laughs> I guess she didn't speak English. So my mom found this singing teacher, and then. Next door was, was the convent. There was a nun that was teaching piano lessons. So I took piano lessons from a nun. Um, uh, God, I haven't said those words in so long. Uh, and she taught me um, Bach and Beethoven, and I played classical for years. 
uh, until I started working as a dancer. And I sort of put the piano on the back burner. And then I ended up playing rock and roll. So from Bach to Beatles, you know. Wow. So, yeah. so talk to me about your dancing, dancing as a child. You, you danced. <laughs> So I danced from three years old all the way through, my gosh. Um, I worked at, uh, I did a lot of stage shows um, and I did a lot of musicals. And um, it sort of turned into a job, like it. At, the lessons actually paid off. When I auditioned for Universal Studios in 1992, they were having auditions for a new, um, like a, a kid's show in the theme park called American Tale. It was based on the movie American Tale that Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis uh, wrote and directed and produced. They wanted to make a live action show at in the theme park. So they auditioned uh, dancers. And you, know, you, you don't really know what you're auditioning for because the show hadn't even been created yet. Right. But we, we were costume, we were mice in costume and that, job led to other shows in the park where I played Dino in the Flintstones and I played Chucky in the Rugrats and I was Natasha in uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. I was like the shortest Natasha and the tallest Rocky, you know, cause you can play different characters. Um, well, a lot of so, characters, right? Like, like characters like this? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that job, I did not have to um, dance. I, I They just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't suffocate and and pass out. I had so much costume work done that oh, when I, um, the casting director called me that for that and said, we had a guy in the beer barrel and he just, he was claustrophobic. That's and it's, it is claustrophobic to be in a costume like that for a long time. It is. Um, but Probably those- They forgot to put the beer in there, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny, but it, each job led to uh, doing a TV show in costume, you know, one of, the, one of the ones that was on the video. And then the thing with Eddie Murphy, um, that was Beverly Hills Cop 3, and John Landis was directing it, and he was at Universal. He had a, a, a an office at Universal, and the movie takes place in the theme park. So he came down to the theme park and looked around and went, oh, I want all these costume characters. This is perfect. I'll just hire everybody. and. I realized he didn't know what we could do in costume. You know, we did. He didn't know we could dance. So I scheduled him. I don't know how I got a meeting with John Landis, but I ended up getting a meeting and I choreographed a dance routine and I grabbed another mouse and I said, watch what's possible in these costumes. And we did a tap dance. He then created this whole new scene, hired a choreographer. And that's the scene that you saw with all of the characters dancing. And we got to dance with Eddie Murphy. I mean, it, these costume characters have run my life and then doing, you know, I thought I was done with it. And then a couple of years ago, I, I get this Kia commercial and they wanted me to play my little piano and guitar. And when I got the contract, it said, uh, guitar hamster. And I called my agent and I said, oh my God, am I dancing with one of those hamsters? I love those commercials. They're so cute. She said, no, honey, you are the hamster. <laughs> You're the hamster. Oh you are the hamster. Well, it's funny, Julie, because uh, you have somebody who can relate here because uh, she actually was Chucky for her first job at Chucky Cheese. I was Cheese. Chucky Cheese for five years. Five years. Was, <gasps> That's awesome. I hated every minute of it. But yeah. What? No, I didn't hate every minute. No. It was I married her. I, she said she could get me free pizza for life. So. <laughs> It's hot. It's hot to be in that costume. It's yeah. Hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we, uh, we were outside dancing in the heat um, and we had five shows a day. Oh, and, uh, I hear it you. was, yeah. Yep. Now, now what, what is your first love amongst those things, Julie? If they said, okay, you could either be an actor, a voiceover artist, a or musician, a or a dancer, what would you say? Okay, I'll get rid of the others and I'll just focus on mm. it be. Well, you know, I've always wanted, uh, acting has been my passion since I was a kid. Dancing was, but you know, after tearing ligaments and breaking feet and getting older, I I can hang out my toe shoes and I'm good with that. Um, I, as a kid, I always wanted to be a rock star. Never thought I would be on stage playing in bands, never. And so acting was my passion and I was so narrow-minded that the, the 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 doors kept getting knocked about music and joining bands and I'm like no 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 I'm an actor I'm a dancer I gotta focus 
And then when I finally got frustrated with the acting, I said, I'm not booking anything. Okay, I will audition for a band. And that was 15 years ago and I've never stopped. My thing was I had to make sure that the acting and the music didn't clash. It did one, one Gilmore girl. I was on Gilmore girls for like five episodes. One of those episodes clashed with a gig. One of my first gigs canceled the gig. I'm, you know, my acting career was like number one. It still is. Um, but I learned <laughs> that if I want to not have a lot of conflict, I book my bands. So I took the role of booking all the bands. And if I wasn't available, if I had an acting job, Oh, sorry, we're not available that day. Uh, is there another day we could play? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, is, 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 all right. So, so, talk to me about a uh, husband, dogs, animals. Oh, oh well, see, see, there's another good thing about Universal. I met my husband at Universal Studios. <clears throat> he was working in the Wild, Wild, Wild West show as oh, a cowboy. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> we would meet, you know, backstage and hang out and we did shows together we did the halloween horror nights together and we became best friends um and then eventually got married and he started working at Waterworld 25 26 years ago wow. and covid shut everything down but he was still there uh, up until covid wow and um animal wise yeah we have we always we rescue pit bulls yeah and yeah. um Love we that. Them. One time we had two of them at the same time and it just, it was a little bit of a disaster and a little bit, it just didn't work. So we have one at a time. So we're on number five now, um, Georgia. She was in Georgia and uh, she was starving to death and uh, oh, somebody found her <clears throat> and a friend of ours who's a stuntman lives in Georgia. Uh, I had posted, does anybody have any pit bulls that need rescuing? A friend wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> my, my husband's like, you're not getting another dog. And I was like, I was asking for a friend. Well, I, I'm very fortunate, Julie, because uh, she rescues homeless people. That's why I'm standing next to her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love that you rescue pits because I, pits are the un, un, unadoptable dogs. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pits are hard. Well, and they're oh, sweet and they're, and they're lovely. Now, yeah. how long have you and Lon been married? Uh, we just celebrated 21 years in uh, oh, Friday. Uh, oh, last Friday. Yeah. I know. And, you know, it was like for me when I had a boyfriend, uh, three months, I'm out. Yes. That, was, that was my limit. That's three months. I, <laughs> <laughs> I never lasted more than a month. I'm like, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> she had pity on me. This <laughs> he was a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, what what was your your first acting job? Um, it was like my first real one with a Union. It was the commercial. But after the commercial, I auditioned for a movie called The Best Place to Be with Donna Reed, <laughs> Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., and Timothy Hutton, and I was playing this little teenage slut in bed who would uh, bring in guys and like there was a party and I was the girl in the bedroom. Um, and uh, that was my first acting role. And I continued on playing prostitutes for some reason. I just keep getting prostitute roles or madams. Um, but <laughs> lately, lately I'm starting, you know, because I'm getting older, I'm starting to play the, 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 the lawyer that would represent the, oh. Prostitute, or the judge, or the therapist, <laughs> or what that represents the prostitute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah. what was your favorite favorite acting role? What was your favorite favorite role that you ever played? Um. Well, I wouldn't. I don't really have a favorite role, but I do have like the opportunities that certain roles led me to the next step. Like the yeah. auditioning for um, uh, the universal job led the costume character. It led to so many costume character jobs over the years, even up until the uh, the Kia commercial two years ago. Oh. Um, you know, I was on uh, a two TV series in costume. It's like all these acting classes and modeling classes. And, you know, it's like, okay, put it on my head. Just, 
put it on my head. <laughs> okay, cover my face. Go ahead. It's a job. Um, but I, I would go to the set every single day on that old McDonald's farm as Alfred the pig. I would go to set every single day. It was like a nine to five job and we would film and we would dance. And we had voiceover actors that were behind the scrim that were watching the screen. And we had little mechanisms in our hand that would make our mouth move. So we would talk, we would know our lines and somebody would be talking for us. And then I did another series in costume playing a giraffe on ABC. But that one audition for Universal led to all of that. And um, there was one job where my sister, uh, she, she belonged to the Magic Castle. She was dating a magician and she sort of became his assistant. And she, one night she said to me, oh my God, I'm sick. I have to do the castle. I have to go down and do you know the assistant. I said, I know nothing about magic. She said, he'll talk you through it. Of course, I blew a lot of his jokes. You know, all of a sudden the rabbit appeared and it wasn't supposed to, and it was me because I was popping things up. But I saw an ad that was looking for a magician's assistant that that they wanted them to be in Arizona tomorrow. And I had just quit my waitressing job of 10 years and I went, I'm going. I, I'm a magician's assistant now. So that job, I was scared to death. I flew to Arizona and that job, I was in uh, Air Force bases performing for military all over the US. And then they called me and said, you wanna go to Europe? So I was in Germany, Italy, Austria, um, the Philippines, Okinawa, Japan, Egypt, doing all of these military shows. And I remember landing in the middle of the desert in Egypt. Now there's, there's no barracks there, but there's tents. There are all these tents and there's military there and they're just, between Israel and Egypt. They don't do anything, they don't fight, they just observe. <clears throat> so we were performing for them. And I remember landing there doing a 360 degree turn going, wow. I get, you know, I, I believe in like myself up there, like I'm really, you know, looking down on me and, and watching my life unfold. And I really said, I looked up and I went, well, this is what you wanted. You wanted to see this, so <laughs> here we are. But I mean, yeah. Those little little jobs of me saying, okay, I'll do it, just yeah. led to a whole life experience. Yeah. You know, when we came back from Europe, we ended in um, New York and we mm -hmm. did prisons. We went through every single prison performing for the prisoners, except Attica. They didn't think the prisoners would, they said, yeah, they don't deserve a show. But we had prisons all the way through. And we were working with a tiger. I had to feed the tiger. My job was to open the cage and throw in the raw chicken for the tiger. And a cougar who hated me and a, and a lion who was literally cross-eyed. He was a cross-eyed lion. So, I mean, how are you gonna have all that experience if you just don't take a risk? You just, you just never know where it's gonna go. So I don't regret any jobs that I, you know, that I took um, or or have a favorite because they all led to something great. How about this? So was there any role that you ever took acting wise where afterwards you, you thought to yourself, man, I, I wish I wouldn't have done Shouldn't that Shouldn't have one. taken that one. Was there any one of them where you <laughs> said, yeah, that, that wasn't any fun at all? Um, like, I, I, I want to work again, so I'm not going <laughs> to talk about that one. <laughs> well, there was a job that I wasn't sure I should take. And my agent said, mm, I don't think so. And what it was, was a short film mm -hmm. and I had to be topless. And I promised my mother, I would never, ever, ever, I, you yeah. know, I would, that would, be the, that would never do that. That'd be <laughs> but you I did, did it. it. You, yes. did. you did it. I did it. I did it. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> I did it because the director was, a guy named Damian Harris, who was Richard Harris, the, the English actor, his son. And I was doing a scene with Eric Stoltz and James Spader. And I went, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do it. And it was just a quick, I was being, my character name was Badass Girl. Right. And so I was being a badass and they tore my shirt and it just exposed my boobs yeah. for a second <laughs> while I fought them off. <laughs> so you just make sure your mom is, occupied for no, no, did, did, she, did the mom see it um she probably did she googled i you. don't i'm sure i she don't did. think she did <laughs> or maybe she did yeah she probably did <laughs> i don't know <laughs> my, mom, my mom has become savvy uh, and i don't oh, love man. that 
I don't love that. Oh, every, yeah. Every, every <laughs> once in a while, she'll get a, a little bit inebriated and she'll blurt out a curse word on the show. I and do. I'll have to say, hey. I do. My mom's watching me. me. I have to be very respectful of her. <laughs> I do. I have to, do I have to make sure because she's watching me. I'm trying to, you know, trying to keep you under control. Every right? once in a while, I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on to voiceover. You, oh. are, I have to tell you, I had, I've I've seen your music talent, but your voiceover talent, I was so, so impressed. I was oh, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Huh. Um, that sort of happened, Princess Leia. Yeah. 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 That's changed my <laughs> life. Good. So good. That, that has changed my life. Yeah. Um, my, my first, you know, I, I did not want to get into voiceover. That was not a goal of mine at all. It's a whole career. You have yeah. to have another agent. You have to have a demo. It's yeah. I, I was too busy to even think about that. But all of these kids shows that I was doing in costume, yeah, needed voices. So every once in a while, they'd say, "Hey, can you just do a little voice of this flower?" Okay, what does a flower sound like? Oh, I'll make something up. Be cute. Oh, can you do this little elephant? Sure, I can do an elephant. You know, and you come up with voices. You can just make it up. My sister is the one that said to me, you ought to pursue this because you keep booking acting or voiceover work. And I said, no, I don't, I, no, I'm not going to do it. She said, well, can you imagine what you might book if you put some effort to it? Okay, fine. So I took a voiceover class, which is basically an acting class. And, but you just learn how to work the mic. And then I did a demo. And then I sent it out to two agents and bam, I got an agent. And I think the first job I booked was the um, OnStar with Tiger Woods and um, a race car driver, famous race car driver. I don't remember his name. Uh, so to book two national commercials. Wow. So I was like, oh, I should have done this a long time ago. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I don't work a lot voiceover wise. I audition a lot, especially during COVID now. You know, well, act, voiceover actors had to really change and build up our studios. I have a home studio, my yeah. closet. And um, I had to up the all my equipment just because I, I've been booking jobs from home and it's yeah. got to sound broadcast quality. But the right. Princess Leia job started huh. in um, 2010. My agent called me and said, can you sound like Princess Leia? And I said, no, I, I don't know. What does she sound like? It's Carrie Fisher. So I listened to the, they gave me the Obi-Wan Kenobi speech from A New Hope. And yeah. of course I saw the movie in 1977. I don't remember the I, I don't remember it at all uh well not remember part of it so i watched it and i took that speech and i talked along with her i tried to match her emotion her rhythm her pitch she's a little bit lower than i am her gait everything until it sounded like one person and then i and my husband helped me with it i recorded it i sent it in to lucasfilm and i didn't hear anything and then all of a sudden Oh, you have a callback. You don't usually get callbacks for voiceover. You either book the job or you don't. So I went into Disney Imagineering. I'm sorry, Ray, what is the name of that movie again? No, you're not going to see my boobs. <laughs> He's talking about the topless shot there. <laughs> we have so moved past that, Ray. <laughs> I knew that's what he was talking about. Oh, Ray's man. like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the name of the movie again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm turning red. <laughs> oh my god! I'm <laughs> that is the funniest comment I think I've seen all night. Oh man, that's great. Ray's man. like, he's all caught up. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Raleigh. So anyway, I go and behold, I'm Raleigh. I poor Raleigh, we are having Raleigh on next week. Yay! Hello. <laughs> yes, Raleigh. Hi. I love Raleigh. <laughs> I've been in a band with all of these people. <laughs> I know. Yes. I know. Ha have to yes. move on to the. Uh, it's your scene. I, all right. What is that? How, <laughs> how how far into the movie is your scene? Yeah. So Julie, you're you're gonna need to give like minutes and seconds <laughs> let me tell you the whole movie is about 10 more seconds the movie is about 10 minutes so i think you can watch the whole thing <laughs> it's a short or maybe it's 20 minutes it's a short. and i'm the only girl <laughs> that's funny oh we love raleigh paul 
So okay. Paul has been very pro. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was Badass Girl. That was my character name. She was Badass Girl? Yeah. 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 Oh, he's yeah. Not. Eddie, Eddie Stevens says you're a great <laughs> talent. <laughs> Laurel has not joined. Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, okay, so let's get into the, the music end of it. Yeah. What, what was the first challenge <laughs> you were in, Julie? The very um, well, oh, I, I was in a band that was, it was just because my boyfriend was in it and I wanted to see if I could still play piano um, called Little Creatures. And it was just cover stuff and some originals, but we never played anywhere. I don't even think we had a gig. I think maybe we had one gig. And I just said, man, this is not for me. And in 2000, my brother, my brother um, is a musician and he started a magazine back in 1977 called Music Connection, which is still happening now. So that was my brother's magazine. So um, I've been exposed to the music industry uh -huh. since I was a kid because of him. And in 2000 at Christmas, we were all at his house and he said, come here, I wanna show you something. I went in the back room and he has these electronic drums, a keyboard, um, a headphone amp, um, microphones. And we, he introduced me to the Beatles when I was a kid. Oh, so that. we love the sixties music. Oh, yeah. So all I would go over there every Tuesday night and we would jam on, on sixties music. And that was my first band really with my brother. And then after about a year of this, I said, you know, I'm tired of playing all the guitar solos on the keyboard and the bass line. Can we get somebody else in here? <laughs> and we got, uh, we got a guitar player that was a friend of ours. And we did a couple of little music connection gigs and a couple of little friend gigs. And then my brother saw an ad and back then it was called Dramalog and it's Backstage West, which is a paper for actors. And they were looking for a, a, a female keyboard player for an all female eighties band. And he said, you should audition for this. And I said, I don't know any eighties music. I'm a sixties girl. I like the sixties music. He said, audition, call him up. So I called him up and I said, I'm a keyboard player. What, what do you want me to learn? So they gave me um, five, it's like three, three eighties songs, go-go's and, and uh, bangles and something like that. And they gave me their list of songs. So I learned five cause I'm an overachiever. <laughs> Catholic school does that too. <laughs> and uh, I auditioned and the singer was, was like prepared and nobody else was prepared. The drummer wanted to drink beer. The bass player was asking me what the chords were. Um, and there was no guitar player. Okay. So I thought, this is not for me. I'm more structured. I'm disciplined. Being an actor, you have to be disciplined. So the lead singer pulled me outside and said, listen, why don't you and I start this band? These girls aren't up to par. Let's start this band. So I met Rudy Sarzo on Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp when I did the, I was on VH1 Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, yeah. the season, season one. So anyway, she and I started this band. It was all 80s. And then we had a falling out. And oh. I said, you can take the band. You can take the band name. I'm going to start my own band. And I'm going to do 60s music and 70s and a little bit of 80s. And I created the Undercover Girls. And that was my baby. And that last, and it became all of our babies because the girls and the undercover girls, we're all sisters. And that lasted, I mean, it's the band that wouldn't die because we're still getting calls for gigs. And we retired a couple of years ago. Um, we had a business, we had a business checking account, we had a trademark and we we stopped all that. We, we folded everything and said, okay, we're done. Ring, ring, hello. Oh, are we available? <laughs> so, you know, who knows if that band will ever go away. But right now I'm focused, and I've been in 13 tributes and about nine cover bands. Wow. So Julie, um, you said you went to Catholic Catholic school. Is that why when we were the house band for the world's greatest, uh, when I hit that bad note, you came over and hit the back of my hand with a ruler? With a ruler, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's instilled in me. It's in my DNA. I'm sorry. So yeah. Julie, which group are you the most proudest of music, musically? Well, I would have to say the Undercover Girls because oh. we had reinvented ourselves so right. many times. Right. And we, uh, we, we have stepped up to the plate and have gone through so, so much together that um, being with those girls changed my life. You know, we've all been all, ch and I learned so much. I, I did not know how to book a band. I was starting from, I didn't know how much to charge. Um, I didn't know how to learn songs. Remember, I was classically trained. So we'd pick a song to learn and I'd be like, okay, where's the sheet music? Uh, no, here's the, here's the CD, listen to it. Oh, no, 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 I need music. 
So I had to learn to, to learn songs by ear. I still find music online, but I, I, it was a huge learning curve for me. And the first time I stepped out of my comfort zone and went to a tribute band, which was inaccessive, I didn't really know any in excess songs. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be in a tribute band because I know tributes <clears throat> can, I mean, can make good money and, you know, and <laughs> double the money that cover bands do yeah. and have and half the work. <laughs> Well, what what um, tribute groups are you involved in right now, Julie? I'm downsizing because you know the acting and the voiceover are, are, are taking a lot of time, so I'm downsizing. It's inexcessive, and uh, ragdolls, um, the all female Aerosmith tribute, <laughs> which is brand new for me. I mean, we're just now starting to get out there to play. Um, we got together. They got together in the summer of 2019 and started auditioning people, and I came in in uh, 2020 <clears throat> and then COVID happened. So we all went our separate ways for a while. But it's interesting how I got in that band because I'm not, you know, I wasn't like a Aerosmith fan. I was going to ask you that. Have you always been? <laughs> no. I, I love no. I, I'm in the, I'm into. I think everybody. Yeah. I'm into the 60s stuff. I really like that. And I was in a, the 60s band called Aquarius, where we would play things like Mamas and the Papas and the Guess Who and the Grassroots and, and Jefferson Airplane. And there's just something about that that just, oh, man. it did something to my insides that I I didn't want to let go of. But when a Bon Jovi band asked me to join Bon Jovi, I quit the 60s band and went to Bon Jovi. So I was in a Bon Jovi band for quite a while. And I saw my guitar player for Ragdolls, Masha McSorley, yeah, I saw her advertise her band, one of her bands, California Dreamin'. Yeah, and the so song good. list, I was like, oh, oh my so god! So I, I posted on their page, hey, if you need a keyboard player, I'm your girl. Yeah. And then I real, I realized their lead singer is the keyboard player, and she's the leader of the band, so she's in charge. I was like, oh, never yeah. mind. But the lead singer of Ragdolls saw that post, and so I was intercepted. She said. Hey, I saw your post. Do you want to be a keyboard player in Aerosmith? And I just thought, Aerosmith has keyboards? Because I didn't really know the music that well. Yes. And now that I'm listening to it, especially live, they, mm -hmm. their keyboard player is very prominent. I've talked, I've worked with a couple of people that work on their show when they were in Vegas. And their yeah. keyboard player does a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of keyboards, you know, there's a lot of horns and strings and organ and Absolutely. and a lot of multitasking that that we have to do and a lot of harmonies. So all five of us are singing harmonies. Wow. That's right. You know. that's right. Yeah. So I, that's I, how that I, happened. That's how I got in Aerosmith. And now being in the band, I'm appreciating the music. Yes, More. yes. Uh, the Rocks and Toys in the Attic albums, man, some of the best, I think, in, in classic rock history. Those are so... Oh, yeah. I love both of those. But yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to, to seeing the group. Yeah, can't um, wait. Do you have any uh, shows coming up that you could tell everybody about? We just booked uh, June 26th at Saban Theater opening for Queen Nation. And we will be at the Agora. Uh, Canyon Club on, I think it's July 9th. And then a couple other Canyon Clubs in August and then Paula Casino in August. But you can go to the website. It's uh, the www.ragdolls-band and there's a mailing list there. You can sign up for that and we'll just send you a note, a little notice, you know, when we're playing in the, in your area. Great, great. So, yeah. Wow. Yep. And, you know, and we, we haven't really played out yet. We've never had a gig. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that live streaming show. That was our we first gig. We love, we love some Masha. <laughs> yeah. So, so obviously Aerosmith was a bit of a, an acquired taste, but can't even it's, wait. it's, it's I can't funny. Wait. What, one of the first bands I was ever in, Julie, did all 60s. Did all 60s. We used to, she came to see us all the time. We did Doors, Moody Loved Blues. Loved it. Loved uh, it. Beatles, yeah, it was Rolling amazing. Rolling Stones, Zombies. Yeah. I love yes. all this stuff. Um, yes. Had, had I not joined Led Zeppelin again when I did, I'd still be in that group, right? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Was, well, what's what's their name? Do they need a keyboard player? Uh, they, they, were, they were called <laughs> Shout, but... Uh, so since, good. Yeah. I think I think they did yeah. something. Yeah, they, they're all about 70 years old now. So. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, 
But, yeah, but Masha, Masha and Susie, the um, guitar player and, and lead singer, um, I was able to get them an, uh, an artist profile in Music Connection magazine because their story is that they were singer songwriters. They loved Aerosmith. Lo yeah. Who has seen Aerosmith more than Aerosmith has seen themselves? <laughs> She's seen so many shows. Yeah. And they decided, wow, to make money in this industry, my singer-songwriter thing's not happening. Um, if I did a tribute, which would I do? And they both went, it's gotta be Aerosmith. So they've helped me, they've introduced me into a lot of little tidbits of things that Aerosmith does musically, things that they do in their show. And I've watched a lot of videos and I'm really, really impressed with, uh, with Steven Tyler, of course. What a brilliant musician he is. Oh. And there's documentaries that I've watched just to kind of learn about how they wrote their music and also to hear if there's any keyboard parts I need to learn or horn sections that I can hear easier than, because a lot of that stuff's buried yeah. you know, in the yeah. song. So you gotta figure out how to learn that. Yeah, well, you know, when I, I saw that Masha had had um, joined that group, I said, man, what a great fit because- So good. Uh, you know, that guitar playing is extremely difficult. It's very aggressive, you know, and, and very intricate. And she's a great guitar player and incredible vocalist, so. Uh, and, and, and she's not even the lead guitar player. She's rhythm. <laughs> is that right? Crazy. Wow. Yep. Allie Handel is our, is our guitar player. Wow. Okay. So, it says Masha, Masha, Masha. <laughs> oh, she she loves when people do that. So, yeah, she probably hears that all the time. Oh well. Yeah, we can't wait to hear the. Oh, We've so seen excited. the videos. We see. Yeah. Oh, man, so excited. We saw the the live stream. Uh, yeah. Video show and man, group sounds fantastic. So. Thank you. Thank I think you. We're gonna have a, a great road ahead of you there. Yeah, Look, we're excited. A lot of work. Yeah. We're, I think uh, oh wait, Todd says he saw Stephen fall off the stage in Stur <laughs> Sturgis. So we have Swan here. Swan. Oh. Hi, Swan. Oh yeah, Swan. Hey, Swan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so he wants to know what movies or TV shows have you been in uh, as an actress? Yeah. Oh, uh, I was on Gilmore Girls. Um, a lot of the episodics, drama, crime drama, without a trace. Um, a lot of shows in costume, you know, the costume characters. Uh, movies I've done, like, well, Basketball with the Beer Barrel, um, Beverly Hills Cop 3, uh, Starman. I was in Starman way back when I was a kid. Um, and I've done a lot of low budget movies. Um, Chompy and the Girls I did a couple of years ago, which is kind of a horror sci-fi absurd movie. Um, and a lot of movies that y I've done that I haven't seen the light of day. I, you just have no idea. You film them and you, wait for them to come on TV and they don't, or they are in the theater and they don't. Yeah, um, you know. one said, yeah, uh, you, you said Gilmore Girls, uh, so were we. We, we. we became aware of the fact that uh, <laughs> for some reason, we don't know why it happened, but Led Zeppelin was, was mentioned in a Gilmore Girls episode. <laughs> Is that hilarious? Oh That's great. <laughs> I think I remember that. I think I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, they were talking about what um, band uh, this woman was going to hire for a wedding, and she said it was it was either going to be a Zydeco band or, or Led Zeppelin. Zepp yeah, I that's do remember that. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I do have something on Netflix right now. Oh, wait, um, uh, Conan. Were you yeah. in Conan? Were you in Conan? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I did a bunch of. Oh, nobody so knows. Wow. I was. I was their resident hooker. Whenever they had their little skits and they wanted a hooker, yeah. I did seven, eight, nine, ten times. I was there as their resident wow. hooker. No, okay, Julie. Eddie. Reason, is there a reason why you're always cast in that role? <laughs> I don't know. I started playing drug addicts and teenage pregnant yeah. girls from oh, Blood Beach. I forgot. Thanks, honey. That's my husband. <laughs> there you go. I was in Blood Beach as well. It's a big it cold in. It's it in. Thanks, Lon. <laughs> <laughs> I need my resume to look at. I don't remember. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but yeah. I have something on H HBO Max right now. And it's this is an interesting job. It's sort of a voiceover, but it's dubbing. Sometimes they'll have movies in different languages. And will Netflix or HBO Max will want to buy them 
and dub them in English. So they'll hire voiceover actors or actors to do the, uh, the English version. So they audition you, not in person, but they want to find a voice that sounds like it would fit with this particular character. So I auditioned for, and again, you don't know what you're auditioning for. Uh, I auditioned for something and I got a call back and I did a Zoom thing with the director and they told me I booked it. What did I book? Well, it's a movie in German that they're dubbing in English. And you have you don't see the script ahead of time. You walk into the studio and you see a scene. That's the character you're playing. The director's in the other room through like a glass and, he, and headphones, you can hear him. He'll tell you what the scene is about, what you want, what your emotional state is. And the lines go like a tick tape straight across. And when it hits a red line, that's when you start talking and you have to match the mouth. So it's sort of like you double your multitasking, trying to do a lot of things, you're trying to act, you're trying to match the mouth and you're trying to read the lines. So that's what I did for this movie. And I play the lead female who's an evil character but then they said, oh, by the way, you're playing her twin sister and she's the opposite. So I had to come up with a little bit of a different voice and completely different attitude. And it's called Arthur's Law. And there's an English version and a German version. And obviously I'm the English version of that. So my very first dubbing job was um, from a French movie to English. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was. And I, I have the address and I'm going to the studio and I look up. Larry Flint Productions. <laughs> I'm like, Larry Flint, isn't that Hustler? It was a porn. It was a porn in French that I had to dub in English. And I have to tell you, those French actresses are they're they're good. They're good actresses. Yeah. But they wanted they wanted it in English. So um, a lot of heavy breathing, a lot of you know. Oh my God, watching. Yeah. No. <laughs> Did you tell mom about that, John? No, or? no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. The, the Larry Flint building, let me tell you, it has so much security. There's cameras everywhere. And, they, you know, even to go into the elevator, you, they had to, I had to be escorted in, you know, so there is a lot of security in that building. It's still on Wilshire Boulevard. Wow. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, no, Julie, I, I don't think I've ever heard you sing lead. Do you actually sing lead or do you only do backups? No, I, I, well, I, yeah. Uh, okay. So I, <laughs> I have a backup. I, I am not a lead singer. I am not a lead singer. I sing backup. However, in the undercover girls, because we would do 60s, 70s, 80s, three sets. It's a lot for one lead singer. So, and she's a giver. So she said, I want everybody to take a song. So we all got to pick some songs. So I did some 80s songs. I did some 60s songs. I did Jefferson Airplane because I sound a little teeny bit like Grace Slick sometimes okay. without the vibrato, not as good, nowhere near her, but almost. <laughs> so yeah. it worked. So uh, so I did a couple of lead songs, but uh, yeah, I'm, I've never been a lead singer. Well, how, how long uh, were the uh, undercover girls in existence? From 2004 till we got offered a gig a month ago. Wow. Who, um, who, who decided to pull the plug on it when you did? Well, our drummer moved to Nashville. Oh, okay. Our bass player had a baby. Mm. Um, well, she, although that didn't really interfere. She, she brought the baby with her. She, <laughs> we, we all kind of are, were off doing our other things. And mm. I finally said, Maybe we should close the account and stop doing taxes because we haven't had a gig yeah. in a year yeah. and we're still paying a tax guy and we have no income. So right. when that started to happen, we went, maybe it's time. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's one more gig. Okay, well, let's. So we finally did it uh, this year. Mm -hmm. So Swan wants to know do you play any other instruments? Um, I play percussion because I was in a stomp group. Kind of like Stomp. I, um, I need to show this beautiful picture of you playing. A my key car. All right. This one. <laughs> this, this, this is a good one. And you're, and you're playing this instrument. And I, I would say you're really playing it. <laughs> she is playing it. You, you, you keep saying that. Like really <laughs> playing it. <laughs> Do you yeah. still have that, Julie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I used that in the Kia commercial. <laughs> oh wow! 
Nice. I'm never getting rid of that. That made me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and I play what? harmonica. I play harmonica and I, you know, I dabble in drums. But yeah. uh, I think if I took another lesson in, in uh, I, I took guitar lessons, but I hated it. Um, I think I would like to play the saxophone. You know, that's that would be, uh, but uh, I played the tuba in high school and trombone. Ooh. I was marching with a big tuba on in, <laughs> in the marching band. <laughs> What, what What is your practice regimen like? Do you play every day on the keyboard or? Pretty much, yeah. And, yeah, and, wow. and about right. how long would you say you play every day? It, it depends on the songs that I'm learning. But when I work with David Brighton, um, we did a lot of, uh, we went out of, uh, out of town to do um, orchestra shows where we sit with an orchestra behind us and I'm playing a grand piano. Um, and this is all David Bowie music. And David Bowie has a lot of piano and organ and keyboard. Um, I practiced scales every day uh, before that show and practiced David Bowie stuff every single day because you're in front of, you know, this huge uh, auditorium with an orchestra behind you and strings and a conductor wow. and David Brighton, you yeah. want to yeah. step up to the plate. So, sure. Sure. But, so I haven't played scales in a while, but I, I will sit down, I have a piano in the house and I have a studio outside with all my keyboards, but I will sit down at the piano and just play some 60s music and play Beatles and play, you know, sticks or whatever. Yeah, um, that's awesome. So, yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, Inaccessive. Um, is there anything on the books for them? Uh, I we're never going the opportunity to see the group. No, not, never. Oh, we've been together 15 years. It's about time you see this group. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, we're taking a little break and we're making some changes. Okay. Um, but uh, so we're not accepting any gigs right now, but mm -hmm. okay. we will be. Okay. I mean, we had a lot booked last year. You know, we had yeah. Orange County Fair and we had all these casinos and concerts in the park. And then, of course, they all got shut down. Well, I, I'm surprised. Um, I'm surprised that we've never been on the same bill uh, with you with that group. Um, we were in Vegas at Fremont Street. I don't know if you were with Led Zepp again. Was that? Were you there? Absolutely. For, yeah. For New Year's Eve. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We played. We played right after you, Jim. We played right <laughs> after you. Yeah, but this is he was all, Julie. He was a, I was, it was I, cold. I, I needed to go thaw out. <laughs> It was cold. I, it was like two degrees out there. That was ridiculous. It was cold. I remember that night. It was were you cold. guys bundled up? Yeah, we were bundled up. Yeah. I was watching your show. I was I was right down front watching your show. Were you watching it? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. man. Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, no, we I, I'm telling you, I, I and now 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 you're in an amazing project with Masha. Yeah. Masha. Yes, yes. 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 A a any other things uh, on the horizon except for the 60s group you and I are going to start? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no I'm just, I audition every day a lot. Uh, yeah. Even during this, I got an audition. So I'm auditioning a lot for TV and, and, and voiceovers. And so, you know, I, I have really good agents and really good managers and something will kick soon. Something will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what does Excel say? Do you have you, any? Uh, oh, you, I, yeah. If you, <laughs> if you happen to audition for a, a big long-term show and you happen to land the gig, like a TV series or something, yes. um, high pension, yeah, uh, insurance, yeah, I'd have to take yeah. the job. Yeah. My agents would fire me or yeah. I would, they would drop me sure. if I said, yeah, I got a gig. Sorry, I can't, I can't be on, um, you know, the new Netflix show. <laughs> No, I'd have to. That's that's my number one. Yeah, and all the bands know that. They know that. That's if incredible. I book something, sure. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I book. That's why I've been booking my bands for fifteen years. So there is no conflict like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, agree. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, well, we're getting going again. Yeah, music are, is are starting. So and... bands are going to be booking. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that, that Kia commercial was my two worlds colliding. It was acting and music. And I never thought that would happen. Wow. And say, same with the uh, rock and roll fantasy camp. What? I was on a reality show. Well, where you can know? we find that commercial? Is it on YouTube anywhere? Um, Jilly? Uh, the Kia, the Kia commercial is, it's, it was, a, it was actually a, a music video. Um, oh. And we shot it. We, we recorded it at Capitol records. Um, 
where the Beatles recorded. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, um, it's on YouTube. It's the Kia Soul, S O U L, 2016. Kia okay. Soul. Oh, we'll yeah. definitely we'll definitely bring that up. And, oh yeah, it's a great commercial. Okay. It's with well, Nathan uh, Ratliff, who's a, a country songwriter. Okay. Yeah. The, the rock and roll fantasy camp. Uh, how did that oh. come about? Oh, that was neat. Oh my gosh. Um, it, there were auditions for musicians. Yes. Um, although they wanted you to be able to play a little. Yeah. You know, rock and roll fantasy camp is a real camp. People go to it. Wow. You know, if you're a plumber, you can spend seven thousand dollars and go play with Ace Frehley, or wow. you can play with Steven Tyler, or um, you know Peter Frampton, or whoever. And uh, I saw that there was an audition. And my friend, um, Mara Hittner, had done the camp. And she said, if they're asking you to be on the show or to audition for the show, do it. So I told my brother about it. And I went down and I auditioned. And it was just a dark room. I played piano. They asked me some questions. They wanted to make sure I wasn't crazy or you know, I was going to be destructive. And then I got a call back. And I met some more producers. And they chose 15 musicians. And they, uh, when we got the call that we got it, you know, I had no idea what I was signing up for. My agent said, this is a reality show. Do you realize what you're getting into? My contract was 13 pages long. And basically it said, we can take anything you say, anywhere you say it, and we can juxtapose it to make it sound like you said the opposite. We can film you in the bathroom. We can film you naked. We can do anything. And my agent said, I don't know if you want to do this. And I went, I do. I want to do this. I'll be careful. I said, plus, it's not that kind of reality show. We're not going to get in fights. Although Kip Winger and I got in a fight. That's another story. So it was one week long, but it was pretty much 24-7. You're there the whole time. <laughs> wait, wait. You're not going to get out of this. you got to tell us the Winger <laughs> conflict. <laughs> no. You no. must. Uh, you have to go there now. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I can't. No. Uh, okay. Next time we have dinner together, all then right. We can... Yeah. Good night. Saturday night. We'll <laughs> be there. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was meeting all of those people and um, learning how to write a song. I've never written a song. I'm not a songwriter. No. And I've said that since day one. I am not a songwriter. Robbie Rist, I am not a songwriter. Um, but we had to write a song and uh, we had to record it with Eddie Kramer, who's a big famous recording engineer that did oh, wow. Mamas and the Papas. And, and yeah. we did it over at East, East West Studios. It was a huge deal. Um, uh, what is my brother? Oh, my, my brother. Hello, my husband. <laughs> Your my hub. brother, my husband. My husband. <laughs> We're so close. He's just like my brother. <laughs> so I don't so know what. Carol just checked in. Katie. Oh, Katie. <laughs> so, yeah, rock and roll fantasy camp was, and it's lifelong friends. You know, that's how I met Rudy, and that's how I met Mark Hudson, who in turn produced Aerosmith and is Steven Tyler's best friend. Mark Hudson is a big producer, and he got on with the Ragdolls on Zoom and coached us on our live show wow. on what to do and and little backstories. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Again, it's all about these connections. Yeah. I was not going to do that reality show. That's exactly you know? right. You're exactly right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Well, all right. <laughs> so what 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 next show do we get to see you at? You mean where what show am I going to? The very yeah. next next actually you're talking music. Music. Uh, am, I, am I going to TLR on yes. some you're going to Saturday TLR night? On Saturday? Gore Hills. Uh, I'll be with my sister on Saturday. It's her birthday. Oh, man. You're not going to help bring in 39? <laughs> oh, wait. When's your birthday? On the 15th? Saturday. Saturday. Saturday Saturday's, Saturday's my birthday. That's my sister's birthday. 39. Wait, really? What? Oh. Yeah. We'll be uh, in Malibu. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, thank you, Julie, so much. Oh, so oh, this was so much fun. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, we'll have so to do it fun. again. We'll definitely have to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got no more to tell you. I'm done. I mean, that was that's oh. it. That's my life. <laughs> up to here, up to this point. I'm good. The the next time we have you on, we'll reserve the whole show for the winger story. Yeah. How does that sound? <laughs> he wants to know he's gonna Literally. find out. <laughs> it's gonna be right. a, it's gonna be a wine night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You got it. 
<laughs> Cheers. Right. Cheers. Oh, man. Cheers. I love you guys. I love you so much. Love you too, we Julie. love you so much. Thank you so much. Right. Thank, Thank you, everybody. It's great to be in here. All right. Have a great night. All right. And, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Julie Dole. All right. Okay, guys. So, that was great. That yeah, was so informative. So much fun. So much fun. A lot of, with a lot our of stuff that I never uh, knew about, Julie. So she that's... is a multi talented girl. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, incredible keyboard Dance, player. Too. Sing, acting. Yeah. No. She is a package. I'm yeah, telling she's you. Great. She is amazing. She is so good. Yeah. So, uh, last, last reminder. Uh, Friday night at the <laughs> Patty Station with uh, the Long Run. So we're, that's going to be the precursor for the big. That's the uh, that's the pre thirty nine birthday. Yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> I feel like thirty nine is a good number. That's right. That's right. Why. I so, don't even know why I picked that. Yeah. No. So um, Friday night is going to be the precursor to the big uh, Blonde birthday bash on Saturday night at the Canyon. Yeah. So we'll we'll get an early start on the celebration on Friday. Patty Station with TLR. All acoustic show. It's down in San Juan Capistrano. The very next night, uh, we're playing at the Canyon Club in Agora with TLR. Yep. And that's the that's Blondie's birthday bash. We want to encourage <laughs> all of you to come out. Uh, there's gonna, we're going to be posting a coupon that you can get in for ten bucks and avoid all those Ticketmaster fees. No videos on Saturday. No videos. No, I felt like my mom might be watching. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then tomorrow night, if you guys, <laughs> anybody up in the Paso Robles area, Led Zepp again tomorrow night at the Barrel House Brewing yeah. Company. It's only a five and a half hour drive. Yeah, that's it. I mean, if I can do it, so can all of you. Uh, thank you so much for being uh, with you us, guys, guys. We had such a good time with our good friend, Julie. Yes. She Again, thank you, Julie. It was amazing. We love spending time with you and we want more. We want more. Yes, 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 absolutely. yes. Absolutely. And so next week, uh, our really good friend, Raleigh DeVore. Raleigh DeVore. Uh, who plays in it. He plays in Multi -talented as many. Multi-talented guy again. He, he plays in as many bands as I do, maybe more. And he's also which is on a, which uh, is Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes, yes. So uh, we're going we're gonna to hear about all of that, all of his projects. It's going to be a blast. We hope you can join us next week, yes. next Wednesday night, the 19th, uh, as we get together with uh, Raleigh DeVore. Yes. Okay. Yes. So All right, guys. So Thank you once again, guys. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, God bless you. And keep on rocking in the free world. Have a good week. We love you guys.